Coming up tonight, police are investigating an alleged drowning after residents find a body floating in waters at South Beach. Seems very quiet, but still too early to call. NEMA chief gives an update on this year's hurricane season. And regattas are back. Regatta Commodore says he is lobbying for sailing to be named the national sport of the Bahamas. our news weekend edition. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Megan Shepard. An alleged drowning is under investigation after a body was found floating near the shoreline in waters at South Beach shortly after 6 p.m. yesterday. Police say that at this time the identity of the deceased is unknown and investigations are continuing. So far, it's been quiet this hurricane season, but the NEMA director says it's still early. He added that at this point, everyone should be prepared. He sat down with our Sasha Lightborn this week, where they spoke about moving into peak hurricane formation months. She has the details in this report. With August and September being peak hurricane formation months, we decided to sit down with NEMA director, Captain Stephen Russell, about preparedness during any hurricane season. He says we are experiencing a lull, but explained that now is not the time for Bahamians to rest on their laurels. We more than likely can now expect some things to pick up in the, in the tropics. Um, we, we are aware of the fact that some 20 or more named storms have been predicted. You can anticipate some 10 hurricanes and some three to six major hurricanes. That's the predictions for this particular season. And so far we've had three, three storms. Again, we want to continue to encourage persons throughout the entire Bahamas. While we have this brief lull, to take every measure to, to, to review their plans or to create their plans, and just have them ready for implementing if, if something does um, brew up in, in the Atlantic during the course of the um, remainder of this hurricane season. Captain Russell shared that the priority for all of us should be your home. Your home is your, what we consider your primary shelter. Um, over the past eight weeks or plus, we have had some severe weather systems rain. People know the, the conditions of their homes, where their homes are leaking in any area, and they should have um, secured those leaks by now. Um, we're all aware of the flood zones in our communities from the extensive rain that we had. I know we had potential tropical cyclone early in June, and that dumped quite a bit of rain in the Grand Bahama and the Bimini area. And, and, and other areas in the province, we got quite a bit of rain. So we know the flood zones are now clearly in our areas. Um, so we encourage persons in to have a plan for their home. He said if you're not comfortable in your home, develop a family plan and know where the nearest shelters are. And as for businesses? We must have a business continuity plan. Make sure that um, you have a plan of action to safeguard or protect your business and your assets. And also look after the interests of your staff members. This is all, all part of the business plan. Because many, many business after major hurricane, if they have some degree of insurance or they have a plan to regroup after storm, they go into bankrupt, bankruptcy or, or just simply, simply close down. So encourage persons to have a plan as to how you would continue your operations after, after disaster. Reporting for our news, I'm Sasha Lightborn. Leader of the Free National Movement, Michael Pintard, is calling on the Davis administration to stop overselling and under-delivering. Pintard pointed to what he called their failed promises for Grand Bahama. In Grand Bahama, people are sick and tired of frequent announcements without the delivery of the thing that has been promised. They were tired whenever we did it, and they are extra tired now that it's being done again. Pintard also pointing to what he feels is the lack of progress on the sale of the Grand Lucayan Resort. When you heard about the hotel in Grand Bahama, the impression was that it was sold. What we know is that they had a letter of intent, that there's a group uh, that I've advised that's supposed to be a very credible group, and that they have the pockets, they have the required backing. And so we are hopeful. We want it to succeed. We want a hospital. We need a hospital. We want the hotel to be sold and to eventually open. However, discontinued 
with all the hyperboles. Bahamians interested in investing can now get a leg or a foot up. Our, our Rock X announcing the opportunities available with Foot Care RX. CEO of Foot Care RX, Dr. Danny Johnson. Now we have a technology to preempt, it, it responds earlier than ever to the changes before you'll get an amputation, allowing us to prevent, prevent, prevent. We'll be giving people options of where you can go today to have something done right away. That's all this is. And it's specialty care, high technology, rapid, rapid response. Dr. Johnson says through this crowdfunding initiative, people can get involved in investing in health. He adds Footcare Rx is fully accredited by all insurers in the Bahamas. And the idea is to open at least five clinics in New Providence, another five in the Family Islands, as well as many other Caribbean countries. It should take uh, a year for Nassau to build out. It should take another year to get into the Caribbean. And in three to five years, you will see this company on the Arawak Bahamian Stock Exchange getting ready to do dividends. And we're going to be issuing 20% of these of this uh, of the profits every year after three years, and you will people will see the value of their shares increase as we grow. Social Services Minister Obi Wilshkom says he's hoping to meet with church leaders this month to discuss the issue of marital rape and possible amendments to legislation. The issue of gender-based violence has been a touchy subject in recent months. In February, Prime Minister Philip Davis said rape is rape, adding he will be guided by recommendations made according to the National Gender-Based Violence Law Review Reform. This while the religious community hasn't been too receptive to the idea. We're putting together. We're, we're putting together the um, agenda now. Uh, we're meeting with the attorney general's office because all the stakeholders have to be included in our uh, meetings, and we're planning that now together with a meeting to deal with all matters pertaining to child protection as well. Erkus Communication Chief gives an update on the rollout of 5G. And in our World News segment, Bahamas is not the only country battling illegal migrant issues. U.S. President Joe Biden said addressing migration is a hemispheric challenge. That's coming up when our news weekend edition returns. Director of Electronic Communications in the Utilities Regulation and Competition Authority, Rupert Pinder, giving an update on the rollout of 5G. Pinder made the comments as he was a guest speaker at the Rotary Club of West Nassau. One of the things that we're going to be looking at very shortly, and certainly by the end of the year, is to have a public consultation essentially on 5G, but it would not, the consultation is really to assess the needs or the demands for 5G services. Mm -hmm. So the consultation itself may not necessarily, and without necessarily getting into the weeds, it may not necessarily be one that says, well, what are the demands of 5G? But it may be one to really assess broadband connectivity needs. Sure. And so out of that, there may be a response in terms of 5G. Pinder adding that demands for the network may not be nationwide. Bear in mind is that you can have pockets of demand with respect to 5G. Sure. So you may have a demand that's in the province in Grand Bahama and maybe in the family islands, etc. But sometimes a lot of these decisions could very well be commercially driven. Meantime, monkeypox is a virus that has been circulating in Africa for decades, but now it is spreading around the world. The Bahamas has recorded one confirmed case of the virus, but do you know what to look out for and how to prevent the spread? Director of the National HIV, AIDS and Infectious Diseases Program, Dr. Nakia Forbes, explains what a monkeypox infection may look like. 
people usually have fever. They feel extremely tired, headaches. There can be swellings in the, in the neck called lymph nodes. There could be nausea. There could be diarrhea, for example. It's a flu-like prodrome. And then about four days later, then the rash will start to develop. She says that rash may begin on the face and spread to other parts of the body. That it may not be a rash all over, that it could be on the genital area or just on what we call the trunk, the abdomen. It could be just a few lesions and there could be pain in the rectal area is what has been described so far. Similar to chicken pox, the rash may appear differently at different stages. It could start with small uh, little spots more or less that are flat, but then this could go on to become bumps, raise lesions, and then it goes on to become pustules they, or blisters filled with fluid and then the, the blisters fill with pus and then they scab over. If you suspect you have symptoms of monkeypox, Dr. Forbes suggests seeking medical advice as soon as possible because it could be monkeypox or something that looks like monkeypox. Syphilis can look like this. Other bacterial or viral illnesses can look like this. The Bahamas National Reference Lab now has the ability to test for monkeypox in country. If you are over a certain age, you may already have some protection against infection. If you're say in your 40s or 50s, you may or older, you may have had a smallpox vaccine in your childhood. Maybe that's about 85% protective. It's, it's probably variable, but it should provide some partial protection. Reporting for our news, I'm Christina Dragovich. Thanks, Christina. The families of all murdered victims, also known as FOAM, receiving a much needed donation this week. Members within the Bahamas Senate raising funds to support the organization that assists those who would have recently lost a loved one at the hand of murder. Italia Hall reports. FOAM focuses on providing a nurturing environment for families, children in particular. Professional counseling is provided as well as financial assistance, food and clothing. President of the Senate, Lachelle Adderley, says every member of the Senate donated to the cause, adding that community service and outreach is a high priority. Your reach is far and wide and we appreciate it throughout the length and breadth of this Commonwealth of the Bahamas. We know that not everything you do you can speak to or speak about and that is also appreciated because of the sensitivity of your work and realizing the impact that you have and realizing everything that you have to get done. The Senate body is here today to make a contribution to you, to the children in particular who uh, are going back to school. We know that going back to school is very expensive and so we are making a contribution to purchase shoes and uniforms for the children who would have lost their father or mother to, to, to murder. Founder of FOAM, Candy Gibson, thanking those within the Senate for the donation while expressing her concerns. I would have WhatsApp chatted with the Minister of National Security and I told them we need to hear from them and they need to hear from us, the community. I feel that there needs to be a forum where we both can in, engage ourselves in a conversation because at, at the end of the day, the police need us and we need the police. Gibson also sharing that she believes that domestic violence is on the rise. Every two days my phone rings or with an inbox message where some female wants to leave a toxic relationship. At this time I can't house them because the place I have personally is only a six bedroom place. And so therefore we still asking, we still advocating, we still not want, we still need the crown land because I believe in God for female shelter and my passion alone can do it. Reporting for our news, I'm Italia Hall. While the Bahamas deals with its own challenges as it relates to illegal migration, the United States is also battling challenges of mass migration at the U.S.-Mexico border. Officials say they apprehend up to 1,000 migrants daily with an influx from more than 100 nationalities, including Venezuelan, Cuban, Colombian and Haitian. According to President Joe Biden, addressing migration is a hemispheric challenge, a commitment captured in the Los Angeles Angeles Declaration adopted by the Summit of Americas. He further added that migration is at historic levels throughout the region. Now 20 Western Hemisphere nations, including the Bahamas, signed on to that document. And still to come when our news comes back from the break, Bahamas to the world. A former NBA star is all set to shine a brighter light on the sunny Bahamas. And regardless are back. Sailing is on its way to be named the national sport. We have the details when the weekend edition returns.
Recently appointed ambassador at large, Rick Fox, says his new role formalizes his long-standing efforts to shine a brighter light on the Bahamas. Our Jean Joseph has more on Fox's plans to help advance the country on the world stage. I like to create action, create action and, and, and let that speak for itself. Rick Fox, ambassador at large for the Bahamas, making this bold statement while speaking at a monthly Rotary Club of East Nassau meeting recently. The ambassador says he is humbled and grateful for the opportunity and intends to change the worldview of the Bahamas, continuing efforts he began long before his recent appointment. It's been done in this room already. I just become one other person that adds to the list that can amplify the message. Uh, and, uh, and in that regard, that's all I plan to do is just be a louder megaphone. Fox, who has a strong background in broadcast and technology, says he wants to make the film industry more accessible to Bahamians. And so when I think of the opportunities to continue to bolster our film and television program, um, uh, our opportunities around not only incentivizing cre creative people to come this way, but I want to empower Bahamians that are creative to be front of the line. I want our incentives, our tax breaks, our all of our support to run towards our, our talented Bahamians that want to tell stories. And Fox says he wants Bahamians to know that they don't have to leave the country to fulfill their dreams and he thinks we can take our message to the world from home. What I want for us here is I want the world to discover our talent here. I want them to come and see us here. I want technology to be a, a focal point for the discovery of our talents. The three-time NBA champion acknowledges that his plans will require lots of hard work and he leaves doubters with this message. I'll tell you this much, um, I, I find a way to win. So if I'm going to bet on anything, I'm going to bet that I can follow through. Reporting for our news, I'm Jean Joseph. Thanks, Jean. Family Island Festivals and regattas are back nationwide, just in time as the government has announced that in 2024, for the country's 50th anniversary of independence, sailing will be named as the national sport. Well, Chairman and Commodore of the National Family Island Regattas, Danny Strawn, says he's been campaigning for this move for the past 15 years. We should have done it a long time ago, but you know, it's better late than never. So the government has agreed that they'll do it next year on the 50th anniversary of the country. And so that's going to be a grand time, you know, for all regardless throughout the country. And not just only um, local sloop racing, but also international sailing. While he projects a bright future for the sport, he says more must be done to invest in young people. I think the future of sailing is bright. I think we need to put more time into the junior sailors. Here in Exuma, we have the Exuma Sailing Club, which is run by Dallas Knowles. And that is basically a feeder club for the National Family Island Regatta, whereby we train the young skippers to take over from the older sailors. And so that has been going good for the last several years. So I'm pretty confident and happy that sailing has a bright future. However, he is concerned about the lack of builders in the country. We need some more builders. Right now we have Mark Knowles from Long Island who is the premier builder of the country. We also have Buzzy Rule here in Georgetown, and we have Steve Smith um, in Samuel Key. Those are the young premier builders, and of course, Sheldon Gibson out of Nassau. So I'm a little concerned that um, we need to do more to get people involved in boat building because the future of sloop sailing and regatta throughout the country relies upon the boat builders. If we, if we don't have anybody to build the boats, the sports will die a natural death. And we don't want to see that because the sports has so much impact on these family islands. As you can see here in Rollville, all over these islands during this particular holiday, um, people are flocking to the islands and they're flocking to the islands for two things, sloop sailing, regattas, and home festival. Strawn also has this suggestion as it relates to honoring a pioneer and icon in the sport. One of the things I'm hoping that the government will do eventually is name um, Elizabeth Harbour, Rolly Gray Harbour. That is something I've been pushing and campaigning for also. So I'm hoping at some point in time the government will, you know, take my recommendation or the recommendations of so many other people to honor the legacy of Rolly Gray by naming Elizabeth Harbour, Rolly Gray Harbour. And coming up after the break, planning to enjoy the rest of your weekend? Let's see what the weather has in store. And we're back this week with the second part of Introducing Laurel House. Find out, how, find out more about how simply being kind can change the entire lives of others. The details, straight ahead.
some hours left to enjoy your weekend. Planning to go outdoors? Let's see how the weather forecast looks. We started a feature on Laurel House last Sunday on a house dedicated to young women who aged out of Ranfurly home. Continuing today, since the renovation of the guest house, now named Laurel House, the young women have privacy and more independence. Young women can stay two years at Laurel House, during which Cancino works to teach them life skills like budgeting, opening a bank account, navigating public transport, job interviewing skills, and bill paying. Since the renovation of the Cancino's guest house, now named Laurel House, the young women have privacy and more independence. Young women can stay two years at Laurel House, during which Cancino works to teach them life skills like budgeting, opening a bank account, navigating public transport, job interviews, and bill paying. Cancino says she got the name for the house from a friend of hers who had planned to come to Nassau to work with orphan children. Laurel was a friend of mine. Um, she passed away uh, five years ago she had cancer and I didn't know she didn't tell me that she had cancer she didn't want anybody to know just her family but she was an orphan Cancino says that after being orphaned Laurel worked her way through boarding school and college and became very successful but that she always looked out for girls in a similar situation to her she would donate money for Ranfurly she would send me money to help with the girls that were here and she, uh, we had a plan that she was coming to Nassau um, to come to Ranfurly with me and talk to the kids and tell her story, um, which was incredible, um, what she had made of her life coming from, you know, as a teenager being orphaned. And unfortunately, I lost her and I wanted to, um, I wanted to honor her memory. Cancino says her favorite part is seeing Laurel House residents succeed and enjoy life. Seeing them grow even the girls that I have now, how much they've grown in like a year. Um, that's, that's what I love. And I love to hear the laughter coming from the backyard, you know, on nights when they're fooling around and having a good time and I can hear them all giggling and it just warms my heart. From construction and plumbing companies offering donations in kind to organizations like the Rotary Club of East Nassau helping with the renovation of the cottage, the Cancinos stress that Laurel House has been the work of a village. Rotary was a big part of it and our church, St. Andrew's Kirk, the, the money is actually in the St. Andrew's Kirk account because we didn't want it in our account. So if you donate, you donate to St. Andrew's Kirk for Laurel House. Reporting for our news, I'm Marlena Leonard. Awesome initiative. Thank you so much, Marlena. And thank you for joining us for our News of Weekend Edition. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Megan Shepard. Continue to have a safe and wonderful weekend.